Hallelujah. Praise God. Got your Bible? The 15th chapter of the book of John. How many has got it? Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. In John chapter 15, begin with verse 1. I want you to recognize who's talking tonight. Amen. It's our Lord. I said it's our Lord talking. Amen. This isn't, you know, just a man, but this is God speaking to the church. Amen. Hallelujah. We have to acknowledge of what he has to say to us tonight. Amen. Notice what he said. He said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except you abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will. And it shall be done unto you. Look right over at verse 26. But when the Comforter, when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify me. And ye also shall bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. Shake somebody's hand and tell them, I want the Lord to talk to me tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. I got to make it. Above all things, I got to get there. Amen. And this road that we're going to travel to get there is not a broad way, according to Jesus. But it is a narrow road, and he said a few a few there be that are able to enter into that road that gets there. And you know, there's conditions that we've got to meet in order to make it tonight. And I believe tonight with all my heart that the Lord is standing in the, standing in the door, in the, on the threshold, ready to come and to take His church out of here. Amen. I believe it with all of my heart. Tonight I want to preach on the subject why God fills men with the Holy Ghost. Why God fills men with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now I want you to accept this message tonight as a privilege of being filled with the Holy Ghost. How many has got the Holy Ghost in this building? Let God see your hand. Wave it to Him if you will. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Now you pray for my throat. God will touch me. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's a privilege to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. In the book of Zechariah, he said, showing Zerubbabel the church, and he said to Zerubbabel there, and the Bible said that he woke him like a man that was in a sleep. It was a spiritual sleep. And when he saw these things, he said to him, it's not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, said the Lord of hosts. So tonight, church, I want us to understand that without the baptism of the Holy Ghost working in our life, we cannot be the vine. We cannot be the branch producing what God wants us to produce. Amen. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost... It's for you that are not filled tonight. Can somebody say amen? I believe that you know if you'll seek God with all your heart. 
I'm telling you, God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. I know we got some men that's been praying around these altars for a long time. Brethren, don't you give up. You keep praying. You keep seeking God. But above all things, you have faith and believe that God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. God will not baptize you in the Holy Ghost if you're full of doubt tonight. Amen. I said if you're full of doubt, you can pray until then and never receive the Holy Ghost. You must believe that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is for each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. We'll get it going here in a minute. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. The, why God fills men with the Holy Ghost is not for us just to jump, shout, and to have a good time. Amen. Hallelujah. He said that there's some things that we must do. Amen. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts 1 and 8, Jesus said, But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. Notice two things that he said in this verse of Scripture. Jesus said, you shall receive power. And then he said, and you shall be witnesses. That word witness means that you are the evidence that he came into this world. Amen. Hallelujah. And that word power, it means dunamis. It is the word where we receive the power of dynamite. But it is power not of this world, but it's power from that other world. Amen. And the Bible tells me, he said, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, that's the church, and in all of Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. In other words, he is saying to us that when we receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, regardless if we're in the church or if we're in the neighborhood or if we're in the on the workplace or if we're in another country or wherever we're at, we are going to be the same. Amen. There's not going to be no variation in our life, but thank God He's given us the power. You know, it's one thing to be holy in this church. When the power of God is falling and we're singing like we was blessed the morning and been blessed tonight in this good singing it's simple thing to sit there and worship God and to be holy but when you walk out those doors and you walk out there to meet that world and run face to face with the devil it's another thing amen I said it's another thing but he said I'm going to give you power that when you get out of those doors and you go anywhere that you're going to receive power amen that you're going to remain the same. And somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. God has dealt heavily with me about this message tonight. And we're going to see some things. It's not to beat anybody over the head. But it's to lift you up and have the Holy Ghost. And encourage you tonight. And to you that don't have the baptism. To dig a little deeper. And to seek God a little harder. You must be filled with the power of God. Amen. But you see, church, it's time that the church looked at the pattern in the Old Testament. He said over there, he was building a building, and he said, show the church unto the church. In other words, the church must look at the pattern. We've got one pattern, and this is it, folks. It's the Word of God. There's no other pattern. Amen. It doesn't, you know, I've seen people uh, living a different life with the Holy Ghost or claiming 
heaven to have it than what this book says. And they'll say, I know I got the Holy Ghost. You cannot convince me of anything. But yet they are living contrary to the Word of God. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter how they act. Except their life. Line up with this book then. I'm telling you something's wrong somewhere, folks. Amen. I, all I've got is this pattern right here. And this is what I must pattern myself after. And when I preach God's Word, it must be this. I cannot preach Clyde Anderson. I cannot preach Joanne Smith. I can't preach any of you. I've got to preach this book. Amen. Jesus said you shall receive power. And then he said you shall be witnesses unto me. And in John 15, 27, Jesus said, And ye also shall bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. You see, the Holy Ghost was sent to bear witness of Jesus Christ. I said the Holy Ghost was sent to bear witness of Jesus Christ. Jesus said he shall testify or shall bear witness of me. In John 16 and 13, he said, For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak and shall show it, show you things to come. Amen. Jesus said he shall glorify me. He shall receive of mine and shall show Show it unto you, all things that the Father have are mine. Therefore saith I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. Amen. You see, the Holy Ghost has come to glorify Jesus Christ in the church to the world. Amen. I said the Holy Ghost has come into the church to glorify Jesus Christ to the world. Amen. That word glorify, it means to magnify. Magnify, amen. It means to make greater in size. It means to cause you to see something far greater, amen. And the Holy Ghost has come into the church that that world, when it looks on that church, that Christ is so magnified until all that the world can see is Christ and Christ alone, amen. You know, it's a shame that we're living in the day that we're living in, you know, when folks are claiming to have the Holy Ghost. And you know, and they live, some of them, worse than that world out there. I mean, they got a nasty attitude. Some of them, you know, they, they, they live in such a way that I, I don't even want anybody to associate me with them. Amen. Saying that, you know, they're a Christian. Saying that they're Pentecostal. Saying that they're filled with the Holy Ghost. And you know, and they say, well, you belong to the same type of church they belong to. But yet they live such a worldly and ungodly life. Amen. It's a shame, church. It is a shame. It's a reproach against God's holy word. When an individual will make the statement, I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. But yet still live like the devil. Amen. And he said and tells us plainly in this book that when he comes, that he's going to glorify me when he comes. Amen. The Holy Ghost was given that the world might see nothing but Jesus in that church. Amen. Not Adam, not Eve, but nothing but Jesus. Amen. Jesus said, when you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Amen. When that world looks on the church, it must be Christ that they see and nothing else. You understand that? Whenever John or what Philip said to Jesus, he said, Lord, show us the Father. And Jesus said, Philip, have I been so long with you? He said, when you've looked on me, he said, you've seen the Father. Amen. He said, I've got the character of the Father. He, he was the expressed image of who the Father was. And now when the Holy Ghost comes into the church, and then the church lives in this dark world, ought to be able to testify to this world and say, you want to see Christ Look on the church and you can see him, amen. I'll be ashamed to tell it to about some folks tonight, amen. Say, look on them and you can see Christ. No, sir. 
Listen, this book is very plain and it's very careful how to describe us that are filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. You see, the early church, the Bible said they called them Christians first down in Antioch. And the reason they were called Christians were is because they were followers of Jesus Christ. They were like him in all his ways. Amen. I said they were like him in all his ways. Everything about them, they identified them with Christ. Their attitude toward one another. They're going about doing good. The things that they expressed, what was on their heart, their heart's desire. Amen. Brother, what their desires was, it was the same as Christ. Amen. And whenever they looked at them down in Antioch, they say you're nothing but a bunch of Christ-like people. Amen. And church, what brought all this on? Brother, it was by the power of the Holy Ghost that made this men, these men different than anybody else ever was. Amen. By the power of the Holy Ghost. The will of God now becomes the will of the church. Hello? I said the will of God now becomes the will of the church. Amen. They now have become the expression of the Lord Jesus Christ. Shining in this dark world. And the word of God becomes alive again in them. By the Holy Ghost. I ask you tonight. Who wants to be filled with the Holy Ghost? That's me Lord. Amen. I said that's me Lord. Amen. Paul made this statement to some of them. And he said you are an epistle that are read by most men. In other words Brother Anderson. What he was saying is. You are now the living word of God. You're living the word. Amen. When they look on you. They can see that the word is not dead but that the word is alive and what makes that word alive in me is the Holy Ghost hallelujah I said church it's the Holy Ghost amen you see tonight now listen very carefully to me the Holy Ghost is the will of God almighty hello the Holy Ghost is the will of God Almighty. Now listen what the will is. The will is the power of the mind by which we determine either to do or not to do. Amen. The will of the mind is this. We need to determine what to do or what not to do. And the Holy Ghost is the will of God. The will is the power to control the operations, the determinations, or choices of one possessed authority. What we are talking about is this, that the Holy Ghost is the very mind of God. Amen. I'm telling you tonight, the Holy Ghost is the very mind of God. When an individual is baptized in the Holy Ghost in fire, he has the mind, the ability of God Almighty now in him. And when he walks, he said, it's no longer I that lives, but it's Christ that now dwells in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's no longer I, but it's him. Hallelujah. Amen. In Philippians 2 and 5, Paul writes and said, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. What mind was in Christ Jesus? He said, I have not come to do my own will. That's an earthly thing. But the will of my Father which sent me. Amen. Jesus made this statement and said, As my Father sent me, so send I you. Not having that an earthly will, but now having the mind of God being led by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Can anybody comprehend what I'm telling you tonight? Amen. 
Church, I'm leading you into some deep water tonight, and you must try to understand. Listen, we're not of this earth. Amen. We're of the earth, but we're not, uh, you know, we're in the earth, but we're not of the earth. We have another nature now. We have the mindset of God Almighty. Hallelujah. The mind of God now rests within me. This temple, this tabernacle is no longer mine, but it belongs to Him. He's the head. And now I'm motivated by the power of God Almighty from that other world tonight, church. We're different. We've been called out. We've been set apart. He has put within us the power of heaven tonight that this world might see Christ alive in us. Hello. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus said, As my Father has sent me, so send I you. Amen. As my Father sent me, so send I you. He came on a mission. To, for what? Not to do the will of the flesh, but to do the will of the Father. And he was talking to the church tonight. Church, it's not when it's convenient for us. It's not when everything's going well with us. It's not if we feel good enough to do it. Amen. Christ never said, I don't feel like it today. I think I'll lay around. Or he never said, I, I just don't look like a good day to do it. Amen. He made the statement, I didn't come to do my will, but I came to do the will of him that sent me. And he said to that church, just the same way, so send I you. Amen. Now you listen to me. When Adam and Eve was in that garden, they had a will of their own. And God commanded them, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Now you know what? That's a choice. They had a choice. God said, Of every uh, tree that's in this garden, you may freely eat. Amen. But he said, there's a tree there. He said, it's a tree of knowledge, of good and evil. He said, you cannot eat that tree. The day you eat of that tree, you shall die. But they had a choice. Amen. So they had a will. They could choose what they wanted to choose. Amen. Because God created man with a free choice, a will of his own. And that man living in that garden, the Bible tells us, in the day that Adam and Eve did eat of that tree of knowledge that they died they lost something that day folks amen they lost their will they lost their will there was no more a choice it was all over listen man has become a slave without a will of his own in this world as a sinner tonight you have no will you are a slave to sin and to satan amen i said you are a slave to sin and to satan tonight nobody can walk off from the devil anytime he gets ready no man can say you know i'm tired of just being a drug addict i'm tired of being a drunk i'm tired of the devil pushing me around i'm tired of serving the devil nobody can just walk off from that devil anytime they get ready the bible said except the spirit of god draws him he cannot come he don't know the way amen you think about it. When Israel was in Egypt's bondage, they couldn't just walk out any time they got ready. No, sir. They was there to do the will of the Egyptians, which is a type of the devil. Amen. You know, a pervert don't stop being a pervert just because he's tired of being a pervert. Amen. It takes God to change him. Amen. You tonight that are bound by sin, you'll never be free from sin on your own. I've heard people make the statement, I think I'll get saved. Amen. I think I'll just give up this lifestyle. Amen. That wasn't something that you 
you decided that you wanted to do, if you decided that, maybe you woke up one morning, your head's hurting, and you're sick and tired, you're a drunk, and you feel bad, you say, I'm not going to do that again. But before the week's out, you're doing it again. Maybe you got high on drugs last night. And you woke up sick this morning and said, I won't do that again. But before the week's out, you hunting you some more drugs. Trying to find you something else. Why? It's because you're a slave. You don't have a will. That will is gone. Just like the children of Israel. When they was in bondage, they had no will. They were in slavery. Amen. And it took the blood of the Lamb. The blood had to be applied before that bondage could be broken. Amen. You see, the will was restored back to man after the lamb was slain and the blood was applied. Man rose up and walked up out of Egypt. Amen. They were free by the blood of the lamb. There was not one of them that could leave until that lamb was slain, which is a type of Christ. And that blood was applied. Amen. When the Holy Ghost deals with your heart about your sin and about your bondage, He's asking you, do you want to be free? And if you accept His call, and if you come to Jesus, and that blood is applied to your heart and life, you are free. The Bible said, he whom the Son makes free is free indeed. Amen. In other words, you will be restored back to do just as you please. You have a mind of your own. You have a will of your own. Now listen to me tonight. To be filled with the Holy Ghost, you now bring your will. And you cast it at the feet of Jesus. And you cry out, not my will, but thine be done. An individual that is saved tonight, you have a will of your own. And in order for you to be filled with the Holy Ghost, you're going to have to be willing to bring your will now and lay it at the feet of Jesus. And realize my will got me in trouble to begin with. And so tonight I'm willing to lay this thing aside. And I no longer want it. I don't want it, Lord. I want thy will. Thy will to be done. Amen. There are many tonight that are trying to serve God with that will of man. Amen. But let me tell you something, church. The will of man cannot do the will of God. No, sir. I said the will of man cannot do the will of God. There's only one way that a man can call him Lord. And that name means supreme in authority. And that is because he has cast his will aside. And then he can say, I no longer live. My will is gone. Christ now lives in me. Amen. When you see me, it is Christ that now lives. Both to will and to do. Amen. And I can call him Lord. I can call him supreme in authority. I can call him my all in all. Why? Because he saved me. Gave me back my will. My freedom of choice. I have brought it. I have laid it at his feet. I've cried out, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. Amen. Amen. You look at the disciples of Jesus. You know, they all forsook him. That night in the garden, one denied that they knew him. They were all afraid. These men were carnal minded. They'd been with Jesus. One day they were up. The next day they were down. One day they were bold as a lion. The next day, you know, they were weak as water and running and hiding somewhere. Why? It was because they had a will. Amen. They were always going back to that old nature. If they had not tarried in that upper room until the Holy Ghost come, friend, it would have been over. It would have been over. 
After a while, you know, it doesn't matter. They walked with God. They talked with Him. They was there. But had they not climbed the stairs to that upper, upper room, after a while, through the testing times, through the heartaches and all of these things, they'd have died out or went back into Judaism and Christianity would have been lost. Because just as I said, the will of man cannot do the will of God. Amen. The Holy Ghost is so much more than just speaking in tongues. You hear me? I said the Holy Ghost is more than speaking in tongues. God now in man. The evidence that the Holy Ghost has come is that Jesus Christ is now being exalted. I said the evidence that the Holy Ghost has come now is that Jesus Christ is exalted. I know we make the statement, the initial evidence of the Holy Ghost is speaking in tongues. Hello. And you know, when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you're going to speak in tongues. But you know, we have put so much emphasis on the tongues. We'll pray with people until they talk in tongues and then that's all we declare they have the holy ghost and you know and probably they do have the holy ghost i made the statement the other day and a man you know just brought something to my attention i've often said that everything that talks in tongues is not of god has anybody ever made that statement beside me how many's ever heard Robert Tilton on the television back when he was on the television? Would you wave your hand? Did you hear him speaking in some kind of language? Did you believe that that was the Holy Ghost talking through that man? Let me ask you, you talked back to me. When that man sitting on that television... And he put that hand up and put it on that, towards that screen. And he began to talk in a language, trying to make people think that this was the Holy Ghost. And you know, and how many of you knew? I mean, you knew that wasn't the Holy Ghost, but you knew that was the devil talking. Would you raise your hand to God? Amen. Amen. You know what I'm talking about tonight. Amen. I know there's men like Tilton. I don't know what they're saying. Amen. But they'll claim it's the Holy Ghost. I've been in church services before. I had a lady come right up here one night for prayer. Knew she wasn't a Christian, but she wanted prayer. Laid hands on her, prayed for her. Precious was standing by her. And she started jabbering, fell on the floor. Started jabbering in some kind of... I knew that wasn't God. I knew that was the devil. I said, get up from there. Amen. Listen, everything that talks in tongues is not the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm telling you tonight, there's a, the devil's got a tongue. And the devil can give men a tongue. And the world will accept it. And the majority of the church tonight will sit back just because they rattle something off and confess they full of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because they live speaking in tongues. That's not the true evidence. The true evidence according to this book here and you look on that individual and you see Christ alive in them the way they walk the way they talk and everything about them is Jesus then you can say that man, that woman is full of the Holy Ghost he's going to talk in tongues she's going to speak in tongues but I'm telling you what, that's not the evidence that she or he is filled with the Holy Ghost. Because there's too many people talking in tongues, living like, acting like, smelling like the devil and the world tonight. Amen. I said amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. But I'm telling you tonight, I thank God for the genuine Holy Ghost tonight. Amen. I said I thank God for the genuine Holy Ghost tonight. Amen. 
Hallelujah. We got these people that are claiming to be Holy Ghost filled, talking tongues. Mister, they can watch anything on a television. They can get involved in anything and laugh and make fun over it. That's not the real Holy Ghost. Amen. They may have had the baptism at one time or another. But brother, I'm telling you, he took his flight a long time ago. And all that they got now is a, a tongue of some kind or another. And they're convinced. And I still got the Holy Ghost. But they're not, uh, uh, you know, Christ is not glorified or magnified in their life. Amen. What magnifies Christ in the church is none other than the genuine outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hello. The evidence that the Holy Ghost has come is that Jesus Christ is being exalted in our life. He said, and you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall, you shall be witnesses. That's the evidence. He talking in his 15th chapter about being in the vine. How do we abide in that vine? There's not but one way we can abide in that vine. And that's by the Holy Ghost. Hello? Listen. Whenever Christ is exalted in our life, amen, that world can see Jesus in us. When we are tested, Jesus Christ will be exalted. When our friends all forsake us, Jesus Christ will be exalted. When we are persecuted, Jesus Christ will be exalted. Amen. When we're walking through the fire of hell, seem like Christ will still be exalted. In our worship, Jesus Christ will be exalted. Brother, in the midst of temptation, Christ will be exalted. Brother, that's not the work of a man, but that's the work of God in that man by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Mm. He's coming. He's coming again. The evidence that the Holy Ghost has come is that Christ is now alive in the church. You see, God sent the Holy Ghost to rule in the church. Where the Holy Ghost does not rule, Christ is not exalted. To that world out there, to the majority of them, Christ is dead. I said he's dead. There's men talking about Jesus, but no evidence that he is alive. Amen. You know, they talk about, about Buddha. All I know about Buddha is what I heard somebody say. Went by Buddha's temple one day, got out and went to the door, looked in, wanted to see what it looked like. It was a building, had no pews in it or nothing. Used to be assembly of God church. And on the platform, they had a Buddha up there. A big fat man sitting up there with his legs crossed. And they sat out there and they worshiped that Buddha. Amen. I don't know anything about Buddha, so I can't tell you if they're anything like Buddha. Amen. I don't know anything about Muhammad. All I know is that the, that the Muslims worship Muhammad. Amen. I can't tell you what he looked like. Never saw an image of Muhammad. All I know is they believe that he is God. Amen. And there are those that worship many, many idol gods. Amen. But you take a people that are worshiping and this this man called Jesus except the power of God be there to manifest him we are no different than they are in the Buddhist temple in the places where they worship Allah or anything else people could come in and say the same thing about us 
as we say about them. It's a form. We look at them and they say that there's nothing different about them than they are in anybody else. But when God poured the Holy Ghost out on the day of Pentecost, Mr. I want you to know they said Christ is alive. Amen. Christ is alive. He's alive in the church. The ministry has not stopped. The ministry continues on. Why? Because he gave us power. Thank God to keep living as Christ lived in this lost, dead, dying, sinful world. We have become the light of the world. A world can now see Jesus. Thank you, Brother John. Hallelujah. If someone were come to this place, to America, to anywhere, and they read the story of Jesus, where could they find him? And if they read his character, and they read about him in the Gospels, and they read that he was a man that went about doing good, and that he was a loving man. He had a fourfold ministry in this world. He loved, he gave, he forgave, and he sacrificed. That was the attributes of the Father. He loved, he gave, he forgave, and he sacrificed. Amen. He loved, he gave, he forgived and he sacrificed. Amen. That should be the nature that whenever they look on us, they say that man is like Christ because he loves. And not only does he love, he gives of himself. And not only does he give of himself, he forgives. Amen. It doesn't matter how many times that he has been abused. It doesn't matter how many times that he's been done wrong. It doesn't matter what they've done or said about him, he still forgives. Amen. It doesn't matter what comes on. He's willing to sacrifice his all. That tells me that he's like Christ. But in the natural man cannot do that. We're a selfish person. It's me and mine and my four and nobody else. Amen. I take care of me. You take care of you. It's a dog eat dog world and we'll all do the best that we can. But that man that's been born again and filled with the power from on high. He's going to give. He's going to forgive. He's going to love. He's going to sacrifice. He's going to be like Christ is. He'll be identified. Amen. God gave the Holy Ghost to the church that the world may be able to identify Jesus Christ in this world. Hallelujah. When we looked on him. We saw the expressed image of the father. And when the world looks on us. They should desire. What we got. They should desire. What he's given to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A person asked me one time and said, do you think it's possible for a person that who, were, who was baptized in the Holy Ghost at one time to lose the Holy Ghost and to not realize that he had lost it? I said, I certainly do believe that a person that has had the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that Holy Ghost can be left them without them even knowing about it. And you said, preacher, can you prove that by the Word of God? The only thing I can prove it by is by Samson. And according to the book, I believe that Samson is a type of the New Testament church. And I believe that as Samson played around 
played around and played around. And he said one time, there the last time, I will go out as I have before. And he shook himself and knew it not, but God had departed from him. I can use that scripture. And then I can go over into the third chapter of the book of Revelations to the Laodicean church. And he says to that church, he said, you are poor, miserable, blind, and naked. And he said, thou knowest it not. You are in such a poor, miserable state, you don't even know it. This church one time had the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Christ was identified in this Laodicean church. But they had now come to the place that they were now blind spiritually. They were poor spiritually. Amen. They were naked spiritually. He said, and you don't even know it. Amen. You don't, you're not even aware. I believe, Brother Will that there comes a time that a church can play its games that they can sit back and lolly gag around in their prayer life their Bible study whatever until one day the Holy Ghost will take its fly and they won't even realize it you say well you know how can that happen They can become cold and indifferent. Come lukewarm. Not taking time to have fellowship with Him. The Holy Ghost is as much God as God is. I said He's as much God as God is. And He's going to fellowship with the family. He's going to nudge you and urge you along to fellowship And if you don't want a fellowship and stay in communion with the family, He's going to leave you. Amen. Now, you know, over the years, this may not apply to everybody, but over the years, you that have had the Holy Ghost for a long time and that have spoken tongues for a long time, somewhere in the elasticity of your brain, some of those syllables are hung up there. And you know, when you get to feeling good, those thoughts will come around in your mind. Amen. I can remember as a person that had backslid on God. I knew I was backslid. I was in that world out there. You know, I'd drink. I'd done all kind of things. I'd visit churches. You know, occasionally I'd go to church every now and then. Just wanted to go. Amen. I'd sit on the back of that church. Back there in the Holy Ghost would go to moving in that church. People would be shouting and having a good time. Brother, I'd feel the power of God. And some of those thoughts would run through my mind. And if I would have dared to done so. I could have repeated those thoughts and I could try to could maybe done convince some of them people. I'm as saved as y'all are. I can talk in tongues like you do. I've seen people do it. I've got relatives that whenever they were younger got in the church Filled with the Holy Ghost, backslid, I don't know, so, so many times. I've watched them come back. I've seen them play the harlot out there one night. The next night get in church and shout and talk in some kind of tongue, Brother Clyde. But you know, the church is deceived into a point just because they're talking in tongues and making some kind of motion that it's all right. And these people, some of them, are so deceived into thinking, I'm still all right. I can still talk in tongues. Amen. But I'm telling you something tonight, church. Amen. It's more than talking in that language. Amen. That language don't come from up here. That language comes from my innermost being. It wells up from down inside, amen, and it rolls out of me, amen, but except Christ be identified in my life, I'm a hypocrite. I said except Christ be identified in my life, I'm a hypocrite. If this world cannot see Jesus in me, I'm a hypocrite. I don't have what I claim to have. Did you shout this morning? Hallelujah. Praise God. You still for me?
Come on, brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Folks, I'm telling you something real good. It's real good. Hallelujah. It's real good. When God Almighty takes him, his mind, and his ability, and puts it in you, you're going to be like Christ. You're not going to be a little Jesus. You're not going to be a little God. But you're going to be like Christ in this world. And that world's going to see Christ in you. They're going to know that He is not dead. But that He is alive forevermore. I sit around sometime and wonder. I say, Lord, you know, I talk with people. I deal with people. You know, in everyday problems. And people have problems. Sometimes, you know, this flesh will jump right up and act unseemly. But the Holy Ghost inside reaches up and says, set him down. And shut him up. And you set him down and shut him up. Carry him back to that altar and repent for him. And you go on. Hello. Sometime this flesh will act just like old flesh. Amen. He'll act unseemly, say things to his wife or to her husband. Or somebody that they ought not to have said it. But I promise you one thing. They're going to go back and say, look, baby, I'm sorry. Would you please forgive me, darling? And then we'll just hug and we'll have the best time of making up that you've ever seen in your life. I think I ought to do it more often, I think. <laughs> All this good making up. Hallelujah. But you know, when do you get to your so full of pride... That you cannot go back and say, look, I'm wrong. No, you say, well, I wasn't wrong. Well, take the wrong anyhow. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I, I'll take it. Amen. I want peace. My God, I'll take it. Amen. Let's just get this thing out and get it under the blood, whatever, and go on. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. Dear Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm telling you folks. But when I, you deal with folks. You know you're not going to fall in that hole same day. Every day. All the time. You walk down there through a path. And you stumble and fall in a hole. You get up. You know you look at that thing. You go on. You, you come back and fall in. Something wrong with you. Amen. But say you do fall in it. Come back. You know, you come on down here. You're not going to walk right back down there, Brother Darrell. Fall in that same hole again. No. Amen. There's something wrong with you. And I see folks today. It disturbs me so dearly. Who are making the claims that you know that they're Christ-like. But they're so far from it. I say, how can anybody? I ask God. I said, God, how can this thing be? Men and women claiming to be filled with the Holy Ghost, but yet be so far from the very nature of Christ. How can it be so? God forbid. I hear precious all the time praying. You know, we pray. She prays in one room every morning. I pray in another room, you know. We just get with it. But I hear her a lot of times in there praying, God, don't let me be deceived. Lord, don't let me be deceived. Don't let me be deceived. That's my prayer. I don't want to be deceived. I say, God, you know, show me my sin. Let me feel the weight of that thing. I want to feel when I, I do something that's not right. I ask God, I say, God, I want to feel the weight of that thing. And I'll tell you what, if you'll do that sometime, say, God, let me feel the weight of this thing. Mister, I'm telling you what, God will let you feel the weight of that thing. You'll crawl in a place and pray. You'll beg God to forgive you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 
but we come down to the conclusion of the, of the matter. And you say, how? How can I be filled with the Holy Ghost? It's very simple. You say, I've been praying a long time. Well, it's very simple. I'm going to tell you. Have I got everybody's attention? I got the biblical word on how to do it. I mean, Jesus' word. How to get the Holy Ghost. How many need the Holy Ghost that wants the Holy Ghost? Would you slip up your hand? I'm going to tell you what Jesus said. Jesus simply said this. Listen to me now. Tarry until. Tarry until. Tarry until. That's it. You tarry in that altar. You say, it may take all night. Do you want the Holy Ghost or not? You say, I may have to be here ten days a night. Don't you want the Holy Ghost? Mm. But when the Holy Ghost comes, you're going to be identified with Jesus. Your love, your give, your forgive, and your sacrifice. You'll do those things. It'll come natural to you. It'll come natural to you. And you'll love it. I say you'll love it. You'll love it. Hallelujah. Come on up here, Sister Ann. I think while I'm still ahead. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Would you stand? Yes, please. Thank God for touching my voice. Hallelujah. Church, it's not by might, nor by power. That's man. But it's by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. You know, we want to reach that world, but before we reach that world... We have got to reach the church. We got to reach the church. We got to be hung. I want to be like him. I want to be like him. I, I want to be like him. I've got to be like him. I desire so much to be like him. Oh God. Oh for thy will to be done. In my life. Every footstep. Every heartbeat. Oh, make me like him. Make me like him. Make me like him. Make me like him. Hallelujah. And I hear God will. God will. God will.